It's our distinct privilege to have an opportunity, Angel Miner and I, to talk with Delegates Lamont Bagby and Jeff Bourne. Lamont began serving in 2015, but before that he was around the Capitol as uh, representing Henrico County school boards and perhaps other interests as well. Uh, he went to Norfolk State and VCU. Uh, Jeff Bourne began serving in the General Assembly in 2017, um, representing a portion of Richmond. I should say Lamont represents a portion of Richmond and a portion of Enrico. And Jeff is a graduate of William and Mary and then liked William and Mary, I guess, so well, stayed around for a second uh, run at it and a law degree, William and Mary. Each of these delegates serve on four committees. They chair subcommittees. Uh, Delegate Bourne chairs is the vice chair of the Public Safety Committee. And Angel Miner, our co-host, has some questions, but she uh, said I could start with a general one first, and then she's going to jump right in and be more specific. And my general one is uh, give our viewers some, some of your comments about the 2021 sessions that have just ended. Any thoughts, reflections, comments that you'd like to make, and then uh, Angel will pick up with some question, other questions. Well, I, I think it, I, I think everyone would agree that it was historic, but it was a, it, it was historic not only with the legislation that we were able to uh, work on, uh, and I'll let Delegate Bourne dig into that a little bit. But you know what we're doing right now. You know, usually we are uh, in the Pocahontas building doing this live with you in the studio, uh, but we did this entire session uh, virtually. And so that is something that uh, never has been done before. And I pray will never have to be done again. Um, th there is something about constituents, uh, advocates, even lobbyists um, and, and colleagues being able to work uh, hand in hand and face to face uh, and have some real frank conversations about things that impact the Commonwealth at every corner and in, in particular every issue or a piece of legislation that we're faced with. And so this was a, a uh, historical in that nature, but again, I, I think it was also historical on some of the uh, legislation that I know that Logan Bourne was gonna to touch on there. Yeah, well, um, David and Angel, thank you guys so much for having us. Uh, and, and David, as you can attest, uh, it's, it's uh, it's pretty risky to disagree with Delegate Bagby on anything. And so I, I just want to agree with him that um, this past session was historic for the, for the reasons that, that he mentioned. Uh, but I also think it was transformative um, because we were able to do some things that have been, uh, at least in our eyes, long overdue. Um, we have uh, reformed our marijuana laws. We have abolished the death penalty. Um, we have uh, furthered our protections um, for the most vulnerable Virginians um, who have suffered the most under uh, and during the pandemic. Uh, we have continued our fight to, to inject more equity uh, and equality in our justice system. Um, we have, we have um, begun righting the wrong of, of not um, fairly compensating our, our public education employees. Um, we, we have tried to, I think we've made some significant investments um, in public education, uh, in our infrastructure. Um, but, but one that I know that um, is near and dear um, to Delegate Bagby personally, um, but as the husband of an HBCU graduate, the amount of investment that we were able to make in our HBCUs um, is truly something to watch what I do here, Lamont, behold. Um, and so uh, we are certainly proud um, of the work that we've done, um, and we could probably spend uh, the entire 30 minutes just listing out the, the number of, of really substantive and transformative bills that we were able to pass this year. Thank you. Um, I wanted to touch a little bit on the Windsor incident that happened that went rival. Um, when I was doing some research, the word qualified immunity came up. Can you explain to our, our viewers what that means and why it's imp implemented to the police? If, if, if anyone else was doing this interview with me, I would take that question, but I wouldn't dare disrespect uh, the gentleman who not only ch championed this legislation in this past session, but also when the governor called us back for the special session uh, uh, after uh, 
the 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 George Flo uh, Floyd murder and Breonna Taylor murder and and, and all the other uh, things that we saw as we were uh, uh, gripped to our TVs uh, during the 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 pandemic. Uh, uh, but but if you have if you saw Delegate Bourne, particularly when in the special session when he presented the bill to the Senate, uh, which was a, a long uh, um, presentation uh, because they, they, they gave him a lot of questions, but his passion led him to be prepared for that moment. And so I would turn it to Delegate Bourne who, who actually went down uh, to Windsor uh, this week. Well, thank you, Delegate Bagby. Um, uh, qualified immunity uh, or sovereign immunity as it applies in Virginia, um, is really a, a, a judicially created um, uh, procedural defense uh, when a government actor, most uh, notably law enforcement officers, have been accused or charged um, uh, with violating constitutional rights, excessive use of force, unlawful search and seizures, those sorts of things. Um, and, and really, it is, it is an impediment to one component of uh, allowing more recovery, allowing more redress, um, but most importantly, transparency and accountability when it comes to uh, law enforcement officers and the way they um, have interactions and, and treat um, people that, that they're sworn to protect and serve. Um, it oftentimes prevents uh, recovery on the civil side uh, when a family or a victim uh, is seeking some redress. Um, but I got to say at the outset, it's not, um, it, is a, it is a piece of a much larger um, puzzle uh, as we continue to, to put more justice in, um, and equity into our justice system. Um, you know, qualified immunity, sovereign immunity comes after uh, an injury has been sustained. Uh, we, we continue uh, and we must continue to, to look for ways to prevent those um, uh, unfortunately, all too often deadly um, interactions with law enforcement from even happening. Uh, and so, um, you know, this is one piece, but I think it's an important piece. Uh, and I know that we'll continue to work on this and the other issues that, that will really help to um, uh, hopefully prevent um, these tragedies from occurring. Um, and, and, you know, it was... Um, uh, it was, it, it was uh, really inspiring to be in Windsor um, this week um, because community is, is really fed up um, as we all are. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's a shame that, that within the last month um, we've had to deal with both the Windsor incident as well as another young black man uh, being killed in Virginia Beach at the hands of a law enforcement officer. Um, so we're, we're gonna keep pushing on not only qualified admission, immunity, but also um, all the other issues and, and, and solutions that we believe are necessary. Um, over the past week or two on Twitter, it was um, a lot of people was comparing um, Colin Kaepernick kneeling to the Windsor incident. Is the two related? I would need more sort of background and, and, and understanding of the, uh, the, uh, the connection. I think, um, and if I'm, if, and, and I'll ask if I'm thinking of the right uh, sort of uh, visual dis description, but there was, um, there was a, there was a, a side by side or a top and bottom picture of Cal Colin Kaepernick kneeling, uh, and then uh, Lieutenant Nazario uh, being pulled out of his car, um, and I think the question was posed. Uh, you know, how is it that, like they suggested that, that Colin Kaepernick was disrespecting the flag, disrespecting um, men, in, men and women in uniform, but then, you know, there's not the same uh, qualifier descriptor uh, when, when it's talking about police um, and, and uh, Lieutenant Nazario. Is that the right social media thing that I'm talking, that, that you're talking about? So, I mean, I think it's just another example of the all too often, uh, uh, you know, and highly offensive double standards that that um, get thrown around. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's just it's uh, it's different, uh, unfortunately. Um, I know it. Delegate Bagby knows it. 
uh, Angel, I suspect that you know it. Uh, we're held to different standards and we're treated differently, unfortunately. And, and that's why um, we continue to be as passionate uh, and push as hard as we do on, on a lot of these issues. Mm. Um, I also saw that Vice President Harris had um, a press release, I believe. And she mentioned how cops should be um, up here to the highest standard of accountability. What are some ways that police can be held accountable in the future? I'll let Delegate Bagby go first. Yeah, so I, I think what we've been working on as it relates to um, sovereign immunity and uh, making sure that, that the same sort of standards that members of the public are held to, are, 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 you know, they don't have immunity to that. Uh, and so I think that's where we start. Um, but then we also start with making sure that sort of universally um, that we deal with hate. Uh, and we've tried to address hate in so many different forms and fashion, but we understand that while we can make, we can outlaw uh, a number of the things that how, how hate shows its face, um, we really can't control what's in the hearts of men uh, and what's systemic. And a number of the things that we are dealing with are, are, are systemic. Uh, and I can give a, a, a sort of an example of what we were working on with, um, with trying to decrease the number of, of, of young people, particularly African-American men uh, or boys, I, I hate to say, uh, uh, to be frank, uh, that are incarcerated. Uh, and, and that's so many layers of systemic racism associated with it. It's, it's the fact, and, and we use marijuana as an example, or um, uh, 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 larceny for an example. Uh, and, and, and you look at the number of individuals that are impacted on that first when you interact with uh, uh, law enforcement. Then when you go through the judicial system um, and you have um, uh, um, challenges associated with that, then when you are incarcerated um, along each of those lines of the, of the sort of justice system uh, or, or, and law enforcement, we are presented with challenges. And, I, and what we try to do, particularly as a legislative black caucus is to deal with each and every layer um, and so we've had individuals ch uh, champion uh, everything from what, what Delegate Bourne has worked on with uh, sovereign immunity uh, to what, what Don Scott is working on related to uh, uh, good time credits, uh, what Chanel Heron is working on related to marijuana justice reform and expungement, um, what everyone seems to be working on uh, related to uh, um, uh, parole, uh, we, have, we have attempted to address each and every layer. We oftentimes see now uh, law enforcement be now because now we have cameras. Um, now the challenge is those incidents that we know are occurring that aren't recorded. Um, and it seems that fo as folks only believe um, that there was some injustice done if it's on camera, if it, if, it, if it wasn't on camera, it didn't happen. Uh, and so what we really need to do is make sure that they're held accountable, not, ju uh, not just by losing their job, um, but also in the, in, in, the, in, in the courts, whether that's criminal, well, criminal and civil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't agree more. Um, I think one of the things that, that is probably uh, most difficult to um, change is, is the culture inside a lot of some of our law enforcement agencies. Um, we talked about Windsor a little bit, but it, it is um, sickening to think that the chief of police would suggest that um, the viral outrage <laughs> Uh, rather than the officer's conduct is what led to the termination of those officers. Um, and that's a cultural thing. Um, and we can talk about training uh, all we want. But as my good friend Don Scott from Portsmouth says, culture is going to eat training every day of the week for lunch. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and so until we change the culture, until we change the people that are wearing the uniform and patrolling our neighborhoods, um, unfortunately, we're probably going to see uh, hopefully fewer, but we'll still see these incidents. But I mean, we've got to, as, as Lamont said, we've got to um, make sure that that body cameras are always on. We've got to make sure that, you know, um, we have prosecutors and processes in place for when officers con- conduct themselves in this way, that they're held accountable just as if I were to do the same thing or Delegate Bagby or David, um, you know, law enforcement officers receive uh, in our law, in code, a lot of procedural guarantees um, when they're, when they're uh, found uh, on, the, on the receiving end of a complaint. And so uh, we've got to look at whether or not um, they're being, we know we need to confirm uh, and change the way that they, the benefits that they get in these instances, um, because uh, what happens in the beginning of an investigation, obviously, um, substantially impacts the outcome of that investigation. And so um, we'll, keep, we'll keep looking at, at, at ways to, 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 you know, put the scales back in order. Um, my last question, you both kind of mentioned it um, with body cameras in the video in Windsor, the cop was wearing a body camera and the lawsuit made everything like viral and everything, even though it's great that the public is aware of it. How come we didn't see the cam- the footage until it went viral? Well, I, I mean, that's one of the challenges that I think we, we are faced with, with um, a, a number of uh, uh, disgraceful activity, like what we've seen. Uh, I, I, I wasn't want to say in the last year, but we've seen this time and time again uh, even before Rodney King. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, and so the frustration is, and I, you know, I was having a conversation just the other day. The, the frustration is it doesn't ever feel like individuals that uh, the perpetrators are ever held accountable. Um, not only are we told to give them the benefit of the doubt, we're told to not even discuss the doubt. Uh, particularly when there is no camera. Um, and, you know, there are uh, mothers and fathers that have gone to visit their, uh, their sons in, in, that are incarcerated or have been arrested and they find them beaten and the child tells them what happened uh, for, for, for many years. But it's so important, not just to protect those individuals uh, the citizens, but I think is to, to in protect the integrity of the, the, what we all know, they're good police officers. They go to work every day with good intentions and a good heart. This also protects them uh, because what we're seeing time and time again is that culture showing up and not only the culture empowers that individual uh, that is the, the perpetrator, the, the police officer that's the perpetrator, but it also puts good police officers in tough situations. Um, and, and what we want to make sure is that not only uh, is that individual held accountable, but the other police officer is reporting. And we had legislation that were focused on that this session, um, but we need to make sure that that's successful. Uh, Delegate McQuinn work, worked on that piece. Um, and so the body camera, is, 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 is a great tool. We need to make sure that there's no excuses for, for not using it. But then mm-hmm. we also need to make sure that um, police officers are, are whistleblowers on, 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 uh, on disgraceful uh, perpetrators. Yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think we see what happens when, um, I think the quote was for unknown reasons, body cameras aren't on. Um, we just saw that in Virginia Beach, uh, and unfortunately, a young man is dead. You know, a family is burying a son, a brother, um, a cousin, a friend, uh, and so we've got to make sure that that there are um, requirements to use the body cameras when they're when they're when they're equipped with them. Uh, we need to make sure that that all law enforcement officers are equipped with body cameras, um, and that there there are real consequences for not following those policies. Um, especially in, in situations um, 
that that do involve life and death. Um, uh, I think it's for everybody's safety. It's for everybody. It's for more transparency. Um, we need to look at the way that those those um, videos and and that footage is is made available to the public. Um, you know, uh, so I think there's we've we've done some really good work. Um, you know, uh, on all these types of issues. You know, Lamont mentioned uh, Breonna Taylor's um, murder. Um, you know, I think the work that Delegate Aird put in on banning no-knock warrants uh, in Virginia is something that we have to uplift um, and 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 really uh, honor. Um, I think the work that um, you know we did, um, and I think it was Delegate Lopez and Senator Lucas um, on giving the Attorney General uh, more power to investigate police departments when there's a pattern of practice, um, and so. We certainly appreciate that the Attorney General has now opened one of these investigations up uh, in Windsor, um, but the question remains, uh, why are we not doing the same thing in Virginia Beach? Um, and so um, we got to make sure that when we do put these reforms in place, uh, that the people that are also charged with enacting and enforcing these uh, reforms are actually doing the job. Uh, and so um, it's... it's um, it's not a, um, there's not a one sort of, uh, sol you know, end all be all solution. It's got to be, you know, the holistic approach that, that I think you've heard Delegate Bagby and, and, and others talk about. Delegate Bourne, when you, you reference Virginia Beach and, and not being investigated, I, I seriously had the question about if you can investigate one in which, fortunately, there was no death, why not be investigating the one in which there was a death? Uh, I, I think that's I think that's a that's an entirely appropriate question for, for the attorney general. I don't want to um, guess as to why uh, one made more sense than the other. I certainly have my feelings, but but I think that's a more appropriate question for the attorney general. And Delegate Bagby, you and, and to some extent also Delegate Bourne spoke of culture. And I sit here knowing that I have a role and that it's not just a matter of African Americans changing the culture. Uh, it's, it's those of us who are at this point in time in history in the majority of the population that will change but uh, but but addressing it. And one thing I wanted to toss out to you all, um, talking with my spouse last night, we both recall that some years ago, Henrico County Police Department had clergy riding along with police, primarily if they ran into a domestic issue, that they wanted to have someone there was with some training. and. And I'll be interested in following up after our conversation and to find out um, what, what happened to that not being there. I'm not saying that having clergy right along solves everything. It, do, it would not. But having, having a civilian with training in some areas in which the law enforcement officers don't have training, it looks like it would potentially provide some help. That's a thought. I don't know if you have any reactions to that or if you know any any states or any places where they're really having, whether it's a social worker, a counselor, or someone who would be there. Well, I, th I think you're absolutely right, David. I mean, this is not, uh, this is not something that, uh, you know, the Legislative Black Caucus can solve uh, itself. It's, it's, it's not something that, that Black Americans uh, can solve themselves. It's going to take it, uh, uh, our, our white counterparts, our white colleagues, um, because um, we're trying to undo 400 years of, of a system that was built upon uh, systemic and institutionalized racism. Uh, and so, um, you know, we've got to, everybody's got to, got to look themselves in the mirror and ask the tough questions to themselves. Um, what have I done? What are my internal biases? Uh, what am I, you know, what can I do to change me? Can I change my family, change my community uh, and change the culture? Um, 
because until we get there, um, there, there there's always going to be uh, these incidents. And I know Lamont, you can appreciate this. He's a, Lamont's a little further along, but as as a as a black man trying to raise a black son, um, these are very difficult times to explain and raise a young man, um, uh, and how to how to be safe, right? Like. Uh, it used to be to you know come home when the street lights come on or make sure you look both ways before you cross the street. Um, there's a lot more difficult and complex conversations that you have to have with your sons now and even your daughters. And, 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 and you know, one a few years ago, Delegate Ward uh, had a piece of legislation focused on how uh, do we prepare uh, particularly our young black men uh, in in the school system during driver's ed training to know what to do and what not to do. And I hear that oftentimes and I see coaches uh, trying to tell their players what to do. Um, you know, we oftentimes tell our young uh, black boys and men live to tell the story, uh, uh, you know, no matter what you do. But just as we saw in the video, uh, you know, just, pulling over to a, a well-lit space, keeping your hands where they can see you, commu keeping communication, making sure anytime you have movement, you're communicating what you're about to do. All the things we saw um, the Lieutenant do in the video. Uh, but something that just resonates with me more than anything about that video, there's so many bad things that happened in that video like riding the lightning, the officer saying riding the lightning and so forth, knowing that the gentleman is a military uh, uh, personnel and knows the ter what that terminology means. And then they say he didn't know what the terminology, uh, it, 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 the officer saying he didn't know what the terminology meant uh, and wasn't familiar with it. But then to, when, 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 when the gentleman said, I'm afraid to get out, and the officer says, you should be afraid to get out. I mean, that, that just speaks volumes to the energy and, 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 and that came even before the interaction started. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic for the future, uh, but all those individuals that thought we had come a long way, uh, we have made some progress, but what's in the hearts of men uh, it's hard to change. Uh, and, and one of the things that we need to do is to make sure that while we work through this, we remain mindful that your perspective and your experiences aren't always the experiences and perspectives of others. Uh, and when we tell you that this is going on day in and day out, not, not just in certain communities, but all across the Commonwealth, all across the nation, no matter where we go, I see, and I'm, I'm getting a little off right now, but mm -hmm. I see yeah. individuals oftentimes, and they were out last night as well, um, um, protesters in the city of Richmond. But I gotta tell you, I am more afraid to be pulled over in one of the, the counties in surrounding Richmond than I am Richmond, but we aren't, going to those localities demanding the same things that I know we are demanding in our cities. I want to be safe and I want my son to be safe all across the Commonwealth, all across the nation, whether they're in a major city or a small county or town. Uh, and that's why it's incumbent upon the General Assembly to do this. And I hope the federal government uh, moves pretty quickly uh, because we need this to be something that keeps us safe at every corner of the Commonwealth and all across the nation. Uh, what, what more can be said than that, Delegate Bourne, unless you have a, a, an amen or something else to say, I think Delegate Bagby has, has summed it up in a powerful way. Delegates Bagby and Bourne, thank you very much.